Hey, what's going on guys? Today we are gonna start hooking up these water tanks. Uh, we got them placed now. Um, we went and picked up all the stuff to hook them up. And these tanks we had specially made for us with two inch bulkheads on the bottom. And we are gonna use some PVC valves on the bottom of each tank and then some various other parts to hook these up. Um, it's all gonna be two inch line and that is gonna run through all four tanks. And then right after the last tank, we're gonna have a valve. And that valve is to shut off that whole water system. If there was a leak in the house or anything like that, that we wanted to shut off our water for some reason, we're gonna be able to do that with a valve. And at that valve, we are gonna connect inch and a quarter poly um, plastic line for running for like a well that you would use for a well and to do that we have a couple of different parts um, this is a brass fitting for that inch and a quarter poly uh, the hose goes in there and then it goes to a reducer that will step it up to two inches um, at that two inch line we're going to have um, a slip fitting to a threaded fitting so we'll have that we'll put a piece of two inch PVC into the slip fitting and then our valve will go onto that and that will be able to shut off so that is our inch and a quarter to two inch um, poly to, to PVC and then we have four valves for the bottom of each separate tank so if we ever needed to turn off one of the tanks for maintenance to clean them any reason at all we could shut off each tank individually we're going to have an access to those valves from up above because these tanks remember are two and a half feet in the ground so we can we could kind of take advantage of the geothermal heat so that these tanks won't freeze in the winter time. Um, each of those valves are gonna be basically the same thing as the other one. There's gonna be a slip to threaded fitting that goes in into the tank, will be threaded in there, and then we'll glue a piece of PVC into the slip fitting, and then we'll glue the valve onto it. Um, from the valves, the very first one is just gonna be an elbow from the first tank headed towards the second tank. At the second tank, we're gonna put a T in it. So this, this will connect into the second tank and then it will allow the plumbing from the first tank to come into this T and then for plumbing to leave this tank to go to the next tank. So basically the first tank is gonna have a 90, the next three tanks are gonna have T's and then we're gonna end with a valve that will connect to our poly. So that's the game plan. Um, I went and picked up probably the best seal tape you can find for threaded um, connections. I bought that and I'm also gonna use uh, pipe thread sealant. I'm gonna do a double whammy on that. I just do not wanna have any issues of leakage or anything like that. Um, like I said, we're gonna have an access to it, but it's really not gonna be something where I could go down in there and like repair anything. It's gonna be something where I could just reach down in there. Um, I'm probably gonna make some sort of a T-tool that I could stick down in there and turn the valves off. Uh, but other than that, this is basically a permanent connection that I wanna make sure is not gonna leak. And then of course we have uh, PVC primer and PVC glue um, that are gonna, we're gonna use for all the slip fittings. So we have some two inch PVC. We're just gonna go ahead and start with one tank and then just work our way all the way down to that ending valve. And then we need to do our foundation drain tile before we could run our water line because the drain tile is gonna go first. Then there's gonna be a layer of rocks about a foot tall or two foot tall somewhere in there. Then we're gonna run our water line through there, our electric from the barn um, through there. Um, like I said, the barn is gonna be, is gonna house all of our solar. So we have to run a power from barn to the house. And then we also need to run our water, but we also need to run our gutters return back to the tank. So we got a lot of plumbing to do. So um, I wanna try to get these gutters hooked up um, soon. Hopefully we'll get some rain pretty soon. It's been pretty dry here. Um, so I really wanna get these gutters hooked up because who knows when it's gonna unload on us and we wanna be ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump on that today and um, start gluing some pipes up.
All right, these bulkheads on the bottom of the tanks have a gasket already done at the factory they put on. So these are already ready, set to go for us. Um, this is just a cap that we had for those blue water barrels, that water tower that we made, but it actually fit right in here. So we put these in here just to keep them clean. Um, we'll be using those caps for the top. All right, so here's our slip fitting to threaded fitting. This is gonna go on here. Then we're gonna glue the pipe and the valve on here but it's important for me to put this on first because if i glue this to the valve and then i start threading all this stuff on there the valve could end up being upside down when this is tight so i want to make sure that i put this fitting on first and glue it well not glue but pipe thread uh, the double whammy like i said and then we'll put we'll tighten this up and then we'll glue our valves on after that so i'm going to go ahead and put the uh, tape on first and when you do this tape um, you can see which direction that you need to run this uh, fitting to go into it and you want to run the tape the same way um, if you ran the tape the same way i should say it would actually peel off so you kind of want to run it the opposite way so that when the tape ends and you start threading this on it's actually going to hold the tape in place a plumber buddy of mine told me that um, so I'm going to go ahead and put this tape on here and then just try to think about the way that the threads are going to run in to that pipe and I'll go ahead and do it. Like I said, this is a permanent install so I want to make sure that this is super nice. Put a good amount of this stuff on there. Four trips around and that and so you see how it the, the tape ended going this way now when I go to thread this on I have to spin the pipe this way the fitting this way to put it on and it'll actually hold the, the tape on there if I were to do it the opposite way it would actually help peel the tape back off so you want to make sure and then now we're gonna go ahead and use this pipe dope and do the same thing, get it all doped up, and uh, just kind of spread it on there. And I'm going to get all the threads of this. I am not a plumber. This is just my own research and talking with buddies that are plumbers. All right. Got that on there. there go ahead and thread this fitting in there. Larger set of channel locks here. I think these will be good. Get it on here.
all the way in. All right. All right. We'll do a little clean up, clean up that extra ooze, and then we'll do the same thing for all the other uh, three tanks. All right. We got the last slip fitting to threaded fitting connection put on there. And now we can go ahead and start gluing up our PVC. Always grab a pair of channel locks to open up these cans because the, the primer is usually not bad, but the PVC glue is. All right, so our first thing we're gonna do is put this valve on. Now I just went ahead and just mass produced um, a two and a half inch piece of pipe because it goes in here two and a quarter and it goes into the valve two and a quarter. <clears throat> I'm also going to need a two and a quarter for this side because we're going to glue a 90 right on here and I want to be as close to the fittings as possible. Not a lot of extra pipe sticking out because I need to run in this trench above the French drain is also going to house my line from the gutters that are going to these tanks. So I want to keep these over as close as possible so I have enough room to sneak um, that water line from the gutters by. So we're going to go ahead and glue these up and then we'll work our way down. Start with the primer. Thing primed up. pieces of prime. I'm going to set that primer way away from me because I am notorious for spilling that thing. So let's go ahead and glue the valve first. Sometimes you gotta let it sit for a second for it'll bond. All right. Now let us glue the other thing. All right, and then I'm just gonna push this in there and then just try to move this back and forth a minute and have that valve straight up and down all right Good. Now we'll do our 90 here
really trying to look to make sure that that fitting is plumb up and down. All right. So there's the first one. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing down there up to the valve point and then I'm going to try to get a measurement for this piece of PVC because I want it to be a one whole piece. But I have to get it to go into that valve down there and glue everything up at the same time. And you see how fast I have to work to get it to, to glue because it does set up pretty quick. So um, I'm going to get all set up, get all my pieces dry cut and measured, and then we'll go over there and glue that side. Okay, so we got that sitting in there. Um, about an inch and an eighth. It has an inch and a quarter that it could go in there, but I want to don't I don't want to make it too tight. And then I went ahead and just stuck my tape through the T over here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just read. So it looks like 106 would be tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and go grab a two-inch pipe, cut it to 106, then we'll bring it over here, dry fit it all, and then figure out how we're gonna get this. Um, all the fittings to glue together and then try to get this in here. I might have to go ask Tanya to come out here and help me, uh, but we'll see. Now this first pipe I cut all the pieces off of, I cut five of them. So it looks like we have nine foot left. And we'll mark that 106. my safety glasses and just go ahead and cut this off All right. All right. more pipe here that I think I can get enough play in this end here, but I want to make sure I'm not going to get in the way. So, I think we'll glue the valve on here. And then, after the valve is on, We'll glue this T on and then we'll be able to it's gonna be really close with the drain right here. Might have to expose some of these rocks. To get this to work, but we shall figure it out. Now, this T needs to go on to here, and then it needs to go on to the valve as well. But what I don't want to do is glue it on here <clears throat> and then not be able to get it onto the pipe. So I think we're going to go ahead and glue that side on first, then we'll come over here, and then we'll see if we can get this on there. To see if I can get this in here because what I don't want to do is glue this T on here and then have it be not lined up with this valve and so we'll go ahead and do the other side first I 
testing first. We're going to glue this in here. That way it's done and ready. And then we will glue this connection and this connection. I'll slide this on and then slide that up into the valve. Give it a little twist and let it dry. All right. So with this on here, let's see. I'm going to be able to get that to go in there it's going to be close let's get this primer out of our way before i dump it over Just gonna sit and hold it for a minute so it doesn't push its way back out. It does have a lot of pressure. All right, there you go. Four tanks are plumbed. Hey, good morning, guys. Well, today I think we're going to go ahead and start connecting our downspout uh, piping into our tanks. And so we have to drill a couple of holes in these tanks. These tanks came with a two inch uh, bulkhead for the bottom and top. And so what we're gonna do is we took those off and we're gonna drill a four and a half inch hole so that we could run our four inch PVC into here. So we need to have, this tank is gonna be dedicated to the barn. The, the gutters are gonna dump from the barn roof into this tank. This tank is gonna be dedicated for the house and the gutters are all going to be tied together but on a big rain i want to have a pipe that the the roof for the barn could dump into and a pipe the roof for the house can dump into and so we're going to drill the same hole in this one and then we're also going to drill an overflow hole in the first tank uh, but these lids that these tanks come with have a built-in vent which is kind of cool um, they're like a hollow chamber so they have a bunch of various ports that air 
can escape from. So when you start emptying these tanks, it's really important to have adequate ventilate venting for it. It will actually collapse these tanks if you have this like tight. So we're going to use utilize that. We don't have to drill any more venting in there, um, but we do have to drill an overflow. So we're going to walk over to this side. We are going to utilize this flat part here, drill another hole, and then we're going to run some four inch piping out and down and go into our drain right there. So we left that pipe long and we are going to tie the overflow into that. So we have three holes to drill. The hard part is that this hole is going to be uh, on top of a two inch hole that's already there. So a hole saw has a pilot hole. A drill bit and that pilot drill bit kind of holds that outer larger drill bit uh, like square to the to the thing you're drilling and it doesn't allow it to move or anything so that pilot drill bit is really important this one will start drilling the pilot drill bit and it will hold that big bit perfectly in position but where there's already a hole there is going to be complicated so what I'm thinking we're going to do clamp a board either right here or on the inside so hopefully by clamping this board on the inside will prevent things from falling in the tank while we drill um, tiny will be shot back at the same time but i just want to minimize anything falling into our tanks all right so we were thinking and we're getting a little worried that if we dropped this block trying to get this these straps or these uh, clamps on there or when we went to take the clamps off for some reason it fell it'd be really difficult to get it back out of this tank so we went ahead and just screwed one of these ratchet strap straps to it and that way if it does fall we'll be able to just pull it out so the clamps didn't work they're not big enough so i'm going to grab some old c clamps that i have and see if i can get these to fall over that and um, that lip right there because it's pretty good size it's about like this thick before I can get to this flat part that's right here. So let's see if this works. Here, let me hold that for you. I can get drill bit. I'm gonna put another one on there, but I just want to see if this will. Oh yeah, I'll be able to get by that clamp. I think I'm going to pre-drill um, a pilot hole so I know that I'm going to be dead center. Paper on there. 
All right, that worked perfect. Got that hole drilled. Let's go over here, same tank, and drill this overflow. I kind of marked the center of this spot, and then I took that piece that we cut out and I held it up here so that I can kind of get, this tank is about a quarter inch thick, so I wanted to make sure I was down below that. And um, we'll do the same thing here. We'll drill a nice little pilot hole. That way that, that hole saw will follow this hole that I drill. So because there's not already a hole here and there's no lid, this is solid on the top. Uh, we can't put a block of wood back there to prevent this thing from falling into the tank. So I'm hoping that it will it, it will hang on that pilot bit that it has and, and not fall into the tank. Cross your fingers. Let's see if it happens. So far away. So we decided for me to not use the shop vac, but I'm going to go around and just kind of clean up all of the pieces of plastic that fall. Um, we don't want to leave it all over the place. We don't want any animals to eat it, but um, I wasn't really accomplishing much by standing there trying to get it. Most of it was still flying all over. It looks good. Yeah. It's perfect. All right, we got all three of these holes drilled and you can see how perfect that four and a half inch hole saw fits a four inch pipe. Uh, absolutely perfect. So next thing we need to do is work on this piping that goes into these holes. But unfortunately we can't get down in this pit. We had some rain the other day when we were doing the damp proofing on the foundation of the house. So unfortunately we can't jump down there, but what we can do is work on this overflow. So we drilled this other one on the side of this tank and we'll have the four inch PVC go into that. It's gonna come out and go into our drain tile pipe. That's a thin walled pipe, so we need to step that up to schedule 40, uh, but we have all those parts. So um, let's go collect that, get some glue and take some measurements and we'll start putting that together. Now I need to take a measurement so that this pipe that comes out needs to drop down underground and go tie into that pipe that's sticking up for the drain. And what I need to do is take a measurement. So I'm just going to measure off the outside of that pipe to the outside of this pipe with this level. And then it looks like it's a 69 and a quarter, 68 and a quarter. So. We'll go ahead and jump in the barn and cut some pieces. So since we just popped into the barn, I thought I'd show you guys how the garlic is doing. Um, it's drying really well. In fact, I think it's pretty much ready for me to, to take care of. Um, I did harvest the elephant garlic and um, it's like really nice size. Um, and a lot of you were really helpful when I was talking about those little cloves that were all over like um, let's see if I can find one. Like they were kind of right on this area of the garlic stalk or stem. And a lot of you said that I could use that for next year's garlic seed or seed garlic. And I thought that was amazing. So I did some research and it turns out that they're called um, bulbils, bulbils, something like that. And they oftentimes will grow bigger, stronger, healthier garlic. And look at how many I got. Um, like this is more than 
This is more garlic than what I actually grew. And I have a whole bunch that came off of the elephant garlic as well. I have them all in the same bowl, but the elephant garlic ones are um, different shape. They're kind of look almost more like a clove. Uh, and these ones, to me, the other ones kind of look like pearl onions. <laughs> but um, so we have next year, or well, really this year's seed garlic for next year's harvest. And we're really excited about that. All right, we got our two fittings, our two 90 degree fittings put on, um, you know, width wise, we have them set at 68 and a quarter for the pipes. And now I'm just gonna measure on the inside here to cut this length of pipe. Um, looks like it's 55. These fittings are about two inches they slide into. So I'm gonna add four inches to that. So 59 inches will cut a piece of PVC pipe at 55 plus four, 59 inches. Just a man and his toys everywhere. <laughs> This is the cooler side of the barn. Yes. All right, got this cut off. Here is our drain line that we're gonna cut, connect to it. So we're gonna glue this onto here. It's gonna, a pipe from here is gonna come in and this is gonna be our drain line for our downspouts. This is gonna be the drain line for the overflow. So this one here, we're gonna plumb down the line a little bit and it's gonna be basically below grade at this height. There's gonna be a valve that I could drain the whole downspout system into this. It'll go out and if we're having some super, super cold temperatures that I'm worried about these downspouts freezing, I'll drain this line down here below frost. It's an important thing for, for us to do because we're in a cold environment. If we were like down south somewhere, we wouldn't have to worry about doing this. But because we're up here in North Idaho, we need to make sure that we have some sort of a protection from these downspouts from freezing. So I'll glue this up and then we'll work on the rest of the drain. All right, we got our T glued up here on our drain line. The, this top orifice, this will be the overflow for the tanks. Like I said, this one's going to be the drain for the downspouts. So now I can continue down. That T is going to go up and into this first tank. And then probably a couple feet away, I'm going to put this T in here. So what I'm going to do is take a T and I'm going to plumb this into the line. And then there's going to be a valve that comes up with a, with an elbow. We're gonna step this down to two inch, and then that's gonna connect back into here. And then I can continue down the line. Um, the second tank there is gonna have another downspout that goes up into it for basically the house can go into that one and the barn can go into this one. Basically what we're gonna do is take a four inch piece of pipe. We're gonna glue an elbow on here, and then it should be 64 inches to the inside of this elbow because that's going to ride up along there the fittings are about a quarter of an inch wider than the pipe is so i want to make sure i measure to here before we get it tied into the top here um, i want to glue this up have it supported by something because the pipe that comes up out of the ground i want to paint black like we did with the uh, downspouts so i'm just going to mock all these up then we'll take measurements we'll make those pieces that go into the tanks and then we'll throw them on the saw horses, paint them black so that they match the barn and the tanks and all that stuff. Okay, so for us to get um, the level that this pipe needs to be at, we're going to backfill some dirt here. Um, I went ahead and grabbed my laser, and then I'm going to have it go over to the pipe. The bottom of the pipe, you can see where the laser level is, right with the bottom of this fitting. And then we're going to laser a line over to here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but that is basically the height of the bottom of the pipe. So I'm going to go ahead and put a mark on the tank right where we had the mark for the other one, which let me find it here. 
which is right here. So we need to come down. Well, basically, it's right here. Hard to tell. You can kind of see that. So that is the line for the level of the bottom of our pipe. And I might have that go up just slightly so we have gravity working with us to get it to that line. Um, so we need to backfill some dirt up to that line so that I could rest this pipe on something um, while we mock up this uh, actual pipe that goes into the tank. All right, we got our three pipes that are going into the tanks ready to go. We got them glued up. I took some measurements to make sure everything was going to be plumb and level. Um, these two here with the extensions on the sides are going to be to go into the tanks from our, from our downspout piping. This one over here is our overflow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand these down, blow them off, wipe them down with acetone, and then we are gonna paint these to match the gutters uh, downspouts. We're gonna use the same paint we did for those. So once our, our pit dries out, we'll be able to go over there and start doing all the rest of the plumbing. Um, pretty much I have everything I can do now. I think by tomorrow, that pit's gonna be able so I can walk in it. Um, it's still a little bit wet. So today I'm gonna build these, paint them. I'll probably have to put two coats of paint on there and then we'll be able to jump over there and start plumbing them all up. Thank you. 